Hello and welcome to the first ever GQ Roundtable. My name is Theo van den Bruecke and I'm the Style and Grooming Director of British GQ. Perhaps unsurprisingly, this roundtable is going to be all about grooming, in line with our 12th GQ Grooming Awards in association with John Bell and Croydon. It's our annual awards and we use it to celebrate all of the biggest launches, events, products and treatments that the industry has to offer. This conversation, however, is going to be a wall-to-wall -wall celebration of serums, sheet masks, hyaluronic acid, uh, melandalic acid, I don't think that's an acid, um, facial augmentation, digital and analogue, which you'll learn more about in a minute. Uh, but most excitingly, I have a wonderful panel of guests joining me on the round table, uh, namely the hostess of the Moses, DJ extraordinaire, the inimitable Jodie Harsh. Hi. Uh, our very own primo ballerino, that's right, right? Yes. Mr. Eric Underwood, who is also starring in Cats the Movie in December. And, of course, the face for television that's mostly on the radio, Mr. Nick Grimshaw. Hi. Thank you guys for joining me. Very excited to have you here. Thanks it's for having me. Yeah. So to get things rolling, uh, I thought we'd play a little game, which we have devised, called Facetune Challenge. So you all need, know Facetune. I know you know Facetune. I swear by it. <laughs> um, yeah. uh, and basically what we've done is found three gorgeous photos, actually four foot gorgeous photos, including me, uh, of all of you, and you're going to have to spend a minute making each other look as beautiful as you possibly can. The twist in the tale of this particular challenge, however, is that we've aged you all by 30 years, but the wonders of modern technology, <laughs> and uh, you're going to have to therefore get yourselves back to looking like you do now, or as close as possible. Okay. Uh, if that makes sense, Jody, you are starting, okay. and you have the wonderful challenge of de-aging Nick. Ha! I want that in real life. Challenge accepted. <laughs> Okay, so Jody, you have a minute yes. with your inimitable uh, bass tune skills to transform Nick. Go! First of all, I'm going to refine, I'm going to bring up these eyes. Because honestly, <laughs> that is nice. all those late nights have really let you know, Everything's really dropped down. That's, cool. that's very good. Oh, yeah, that is that's very that looks good. really nice. Botox, if this go, is go. good, Jody, I can Okay, Jody, you're halfway through. You've I've got, got a great seconds. doctor if you want to do this IRL. Okay. Uh, those, those eyes. <laughs> the neck. The neck. <laughs> the, the, no offense to Jody. I preferred my old face than before she messed with it because I thought it all went a bit weird and like the cat lady. They look great. That literally looks like you now. I don't... Should make your lips a bit bigger. Can I just make your lips a tiny bit bigger? A bigger lip, a bigger lip, a bigger lip. A bigger lip. A bigger lip. Two, oh, wow. one, done. Oh, wow. You're done, you're done. done. Oh. <laughs> oh, I look so the same. great. The same. Yeah. Oh, baby, the same. <laughs> I thought Jody did a great job with the face tune app. She's like a professional, which is fantastic. Okay, so Eric, you've got me looking like Gandalf. Uh, yeah. One minute to go, starting from now. I mean, I don't really know what Eric was going for with my face tune challenge. Okay, it's very Oh, reshape. Oh, 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 no. Oh, oh. Oh. Right oh. My face. Retouch. Retouch there. There we go. I don't think you've made your head wider. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you're trying to get your jaw. No, no. Where no. <laughs> Where's the chin? It kind of made me look like Father Christmas decapitated person? I mean, I have no idea. I need to reshape. Oh. 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 What? what are you doing? What's the Ten. Oh. 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 Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, stop. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Amazing. We yeah. I have to say, I had the worst face tune. I made a mess of Teo's face, but yeah, sorry. Nick, you're doing Jody uh -huh. starting one minute from now. Okay, I think Jody uh, going through the face tune got it the hardest. I think she sort of looked like a old EastEnders character. Let's get that a little higher. Yeah, a little oh, That's yeah. good. Is that too oh. high? <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. Physical. Oh. No. A bit Joan, Joan Rivers. Okay, yeah, and like... I was definitely taking notes on where I might need to be nipped and tucked a little bit. Let's go back to. Oh, oh. oh no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh. Okay, here we go. Smooth this out here. Okay, smooth this out there. Oh, yeah, this Ten is looking quite good. That's really good. Oh, really good. Oh, no, Five, that's too smooth. Four, oh, no, now you've got blue. Two, <laughs> one, done. Ta da Oh! oh you yeah. got a little sparkle. Yeah. That's... If that's me at 70, I mean, I'm not so mad at that. That leaves me with the task of Eric. Oh. oh. Gonna get you back. I think he needs a little bit of, uh, bit of work on face tune. He probably doesn't need face tune. Let's, let's face it, look at his face. Oh. Can you take those fat rolls out of my neck? No, there's nothing to be done. Not about even that. face no. tune can do that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> You're at a GQ event. Is that? A, a... Oh, 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 this is fun. Oh, oh nice. Oh. <laughs> what about a little smile? Oh god, I've got ten seconds. Um, 
It's the gizzard that bothers me most. The what? The gizzard, you know, under here. Oh, no. You know? <laughs> this chicken gizzard. <laughs> Done. Wow. This oh, is smart. Oh, amazing. Okay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> So that's a face gene challenge done for this round. I don't think any of us have ever looked any better. And I think the winner of this round is Jody for your quizzical version of Nick. Thank, Thank you. you for all your work. work. Thank you, I've done this before. And what's his prize? We're gonna wheel you in and put you under and you're gonna have it all done for real. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> so we're living in a time where, yeah, the grooming industry is booming, but with it, kind of ideas of body image changing and the way that men see themselves are changing. Eric, it's kind of, this is an interesting area for you because yeah. you're a dancer. You've yeah. been in this industry that has really kind of, you've been the paradigm of male kind of um, physicality, but also there's a lot of kind of darkness in that world as well, or at least in the female side. Is that correct? No, I wouldn't say that. I think that um, in my industry in particular, the idea is that you create a fantasy. Yeah. And so having this perfect body or this sort of really um, statuesque body is what people come to see. They come to see a fantasy. Yeah. I mean, achieving that body is a different thing, but I think it depends on who you are and the diet you have. How have you, have you found that, like, not dancing as regularly anymore? Has it, been, has it been a struggle to keep it? Absolutely not. I'm so stressed out about keeping it. So I go to the gym as much as I would have been in a dance studio. I feel like you see a lot more probably because of Instagram and probably because of Love Island, like yes, ex exactly. extreme bodies. So when you do watch Love Island, like I was watching it before I went on holiday and I was like, have you seen what they look like? I can't go on holiday, like I can't take my top off. This is what people look like. But they've probably spent nine months yeah. working on that. And like you said, it's so hard to sustain that. So I think there is a lot of unrealistic body goals out there for men. Or you look at like Ronaldo's Instagram. It's like, well, yeah, he's an athlete. He's yeah, like one yeah. of the best athletes on the planet. So yeah. that's why he looks like that. Yeah. For any younger people watching this who might be struggling with body image, what do you kind of say to them? If you're sad about your appearance and changing it dramatically or drastically, I don't think that that is gonna change the feeling about yourself mm -hmm. because I think that's an interior thing. I think that short exercise will help you like feel better or you know maybe reduce your anxiety or it's nice to feel strong yeah. and I think they're good feelings but I don't think that going to the extremities of like having a perfect body is going to cure your problems. I think also too like acknowledging where you are naturally, what your natural body is, is hugely empowering. Mm -hmm. So there's been this big surge on social media or on Instagram of these male beauty bloggers mm -hmm. and vloggers and you know there are lots of tutorials that um, the plastic boy I think has a couple of million followers he's huge do you think there's a kind of new shift that men are able to engage with that kind of side of the world and is it an exciting development is that good I think men are opening up to it and of yeah. course why shouldn't men wear makeup as well you know just little tweaks here and there and you can do little bits to make you look more handsome with makeup um, why shouldn't men do that if women if women can use those tools as well I think like when I've done TV or something, I've had makeup put on, I'm like, oh my God, I look great. And then there's always like the sad moment when you're at home and you wash it off and then you're like, oh, that's why I'm really good. <laughs> <laughs> and it looks like you got really ill really quick. <laughs> yeah, because like the boys in Love Island and all, the, all yeah. those type of boys, yeah. they're like totally like, they're like yeah. dumb. Yeah. Right? They've yeah. got more makeup on than me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they wear makeup. Oh my God, so <laughs> For this, you guys have all brought in uh, your favourite products, mm -hmm. and we have them housed in some lovely John Bell and Croydon wash bags. Your task is to figure out whose wash bag you have been given based entirely on the products that are within it. And I'm going to guess that I'm going to guess yours quite quickly. Let's get the wash bags in. Thank you. Kind of like ratatouille, isn't it? <laughs> little mouse underneath. Okay. Fab. Let's see. Okay. Oh, I already know. I already know. <laughs> The way we're going to do this, we'll go round from left to right. Jodie, if you can start. Okay. Let's have a look what you've got. So we have Chanel um, Foundation. A mandelic acid 10%. I don't know what that is. It looks like some kind of pill, serum or something. I think this is a, a, a floral hydrating mask. It's quite like a little old lady's wash bag, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know who it is, but it's someone really old. <laughs> <laughs> I think this might be Nick's. Interesting. Okay, mm. let's move on to the wrong. next one. Okay. Eric, do you want to have a little run? Yeah, in? sure, let's see. We've got organic Bulgarian rose water, anti aging oxygenation mask, an energizing, super hydrating youth protector. So somebody's <laughs> keeping really dramatic. young. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a Japanese product that I can't read. I would guess it was you. 
I guess it was you. You have quite youthful looking skin. That's very kind of you to say. It's the lights. <laughs> <laughs> it's, all, it's all the foundation. First of all, scalp conditioner, which I didn't know was a thing. Was a thing. <laughs> Resurrection cream, head to toe nourishment oil, shea butter, and finally, styling funk. <laughs> <laughs> mm. We all need a bit of styling funk now. I'm going to take a guess this is Eric's because he's the one who's got most scalp on show. <laughs> also, well, I've only got one person left, haven't I? And given that we have Isle of Paradise Medium Glow Clear Self Tanning Mousse, Midnight Saffron Fragrance, Vitamin C Power Eye Cream, so someone who's got wonderful eyes. Freehold spare, so hairspray. It's got to be joking. Right? <laughs> <laughs> no. You gave it away, babe. So let's lift our wash bags and reveal whose is whose. Yeah, I thought as much. Jody here. Ah, I was wrong. Oh, Nick. I thought Jody's wash bag surprised me the most. I thought there would have been a lot more products, but actually, she's able to achieve that glamour with not much. It's fantastic. Ah. I got Eric, I was right. You were right. The weirdest product in the wash bag challenge had to be the styling clay in Eric's bag. Given that he has no hair and he bought a scalp conditioner with him, I mean, I don't know whether he just picked it up by accident, but that seemed very strange to me. I was wrong. So you got, you got the little old lady? Yeah. yeah. So we're all of a similar age group here, late teens. Late so teens. We'll, um, all, you'll all no doubt recognize these scents. Um, and we're gonna go round the table and we're each gonna take it in turns to figure out which of the three scents is which. Uh, and you have no clues. Okay. So you're doing this completely okay. right. right. Okay, guys, can we bring them in, please? This is fun. This is right. <laughs> <laughs> I wish you had smell of vision for this. Yes. Thing. Aha. So we're gonna work from left to right. So we're gonna call left one, two, three. So let's go with number one. Let's all have a little okay. sniff. Let's have a little sniff of this. Oh, oh, I think I know oh, that. Oh, I know oh, that. Oh, that. I smell really? that a mile off. Quite amazing to go through those fragrances because they so reminded me of mid teenage years, like that time in your life when you start caring about grooming and you care about how you smell and what you look like. It smells like um, when I was first going out to like the gay village. It smells like every gay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, let's have a guess. Jody? It's Le Mail by Jean Paul Gaultier. Exactly, I thought Jean-Paul Gaultier. Jean-Paul Gaultier. I actually thought it was something completely different. Did you? Yeah. So everyone's on Jean-Paul Gaultier Le Mail, mm -hmm. apparently. Yeah. Um, let's have a look, see if you're right. Yes, oh. Jean-Paul yes. Gaultier <laughs> Le Mail. <laughs> Next one. Okay. I have a feeling one. we might all have a little bit of an idea what this is based on the... Uh, the colour. The colour yeah. gives the yeah. game away, doesn't it? I remember my brother Ooh. used to have this. Yeah. And my old brother, and I used to think it was like, pretty cool yeah. to have this. Yeah. Like, it's got to be Jupe. Jupe! Absolutely. Okay, time for the big reveal. It is indeed Jupe exclamation mark home. <laughs> okay, uh, so the final, the final uh, fragrance. Let's have a little sniff of this one. Okay, let's smell this one. Cool water. Oh, oh my God. Cool water. Eric. I don't know this one. The first time I ever went to the mall, uh -huh. this is what happened to me. I've definitely had cocktails that smell like that. Different. I think it's Eternity by Calvin Klein. Ah, I know what you mean. It's that kind of slightly minimal mm. thing that happened in the 90s, right? It was this time when fragrances were becoming much cleaner. And the reason for that was because the American market want their scents to smell like washing detergent. Mm. Okay, mm. so what are we going with? Eternity? Eternity Calvin Klein. by Calvin Klein. Cool water. Cool water. I think it might be a Calvin Klein. So now for the big reveal. It is indeed Eric Davidoff Cool Water. Well done, we've got a lovely bottle for you waiting outside. You can, you're taking all three. You're going to smell amazing. Smell like <laughs> We're going to talk about a slightly contentious subject, perhaps. Uh, it's surgery, and surgery specifically for men. Mm -hmm. Out of more than 200,000 surgical procedures performed on men last year, rhinoplasty was the most popular, with more than 52,000 procedures. Eyelid surgery ranked second, followed by liposuction. Oh, eyelid wow. surgery? Yeah. I wouldn't do it to my face. I mean, given my career, I would definitely get my feet made over if I could. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, but I don't think I would do it to my face just because I don't, I'm not a huge fan of men with makeup. And I think that usually when you have surgery, <laughs> sorry. No, I no, I think usually when you have surgery, if something goes wrong, you can take makeup and sort of fix that mm. visually. I'm a fan, I'm an advocate. I think little tiny tweaks here and there can be great. Why not? Life's too short not to, I think. 
And personally speaking, have you had much done? Yep, I have Botox every three months, right. just because I don't really like a wrinkly forehead. Um, I have filler in my cheek. I have my jawline done to square off my jaw hair, and I have a bit in my lips, and a bit of my whole face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, everything. Do you think the options for men should be more open? Do you think there should be kind of like clinics and salons that are kind of much more tailored to men? Yeah, there probably are already, aren't there? I guess there might I mean, be, the yeah. facts that you just delivered are pretty... That's like, true. Men are, men are having stuff done, right? Yeah, men are having Botox. Men are having a little tweak here and there. Without branding anything, do you think there are topical things you can put on your face to achieve the same result as surgery? Nothing's going to give you a Botox effect without Botox. Right. Things are going to help though. Nothing's yeah. going to plump up your face that much like filler will. Do you know what's become hugely popular is penal surgery. Yeah. I've seen that on TV. Everyone's talking about having these penis enhancements. <gasps> and the first thing they lead uh, with is saying, oh, I didn't have lots of confidence until I had this surgery. And then they have that surgery and they gain so much confidence that it seems to be effective. What, so it actually works? So actual surgery, it's not like a facial for you? No, I think they inject the penis to give it girth and length as well. With all, in all of that, would you now have I it? don't know. I, I've, I, I don't know. I'd be worried about it going wrong. I'm like, I have lines already, so I think that I've missed the boat on it. So I think if I all of a sudden was like this. Yeah, people are gonna, yeah. people will be like, yeah. you look weird. Totally. Whereas I've never had a real motion. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> Eric, have you been swayed? Um, no, I wouldn't do it. I just, I, I agree with Mick. I think once you sort of go too far or once you do something to change your natural appearance, people just expect you to look one way. Mm -hmm. So in this course, uh, we're going to be talking about our worst haircuts and for the viewers at home, what lessons they can learn mm. from our past mistakes. So Jodie, I think we should probably start with you. Talk us through this abomination. Uh, okay. <laughs> sure, I look great. So this is quite a long time ago. Now I've got hair on both sides of my head here. Yeah. And obviously now I just have like a big swoop. You know, sometimes you look different if you have like a new bit of hair here or something. You know yeah. what I mean? Like yeah, if you yeah, change yeah. your haircut, it can really oh, it can it, totally change, your face change your entire face. So. When I have hair on both sides, it doesn't look like me. That doesn't look like me. That actually doesn't look like it's you. Really yeah, I remember true. that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, you probably probably took that picture. Yeah. <laughs> but no, that's a very good point, is that you have to always think about, like, I have these bits too long at the moment, and it changes the shape of my face. I mean, neither of those wigs are Jodie's real hair anyway, so it doesn't really count. Eric, I, um, I mean... Well, this is a good haircut, and I'll tell you why. Because um, one time I went to Supercuts, yeah. and I let them put scissors to my head, and cut my hair and it was a mess. Right. And I've found that for black people in particular, you need to go and see a black barber. Oh really? Absolutely. Because it's a specific way of fading your hair and everything and people don't think it's a skill. And so they'll just go over your head and it mm -hmm. comes out patchy and messy. So I'm not very racially inclusive with that. <laughs> 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 Have you ever let it grow? Um, no. Really? No, never. no. I think as a child, I would go once a week. My mother would always say, wow. keep tidy. Oh my God, yeah. so never. Even now, I go once a, every week and a half. In regards to haircuts, I'm most jealous of Eric's. Like, I, if I had the head shape for it, I'd have a skinhead. I picked this one when I bleached my hair. Is and that you? That is me. And you know what? I really wanted it bleached, right? I really wanted it done. And I didn't realize that maybe it wouldn't suit me. And it really brought out the pink in my face. <laughs> so it looked, made my face look so pink. It was like the worst thing ever. And every, when I had it done, everyone was just saying, are you hot? Because it just looked <laughs> like my face was... I was like, no. They were like, your face is bright red. As far as the haircut section went, I thought Nick did really well, you know, showing that sort of haircut where he bleached his hair out. It was really interesting, especially for guys who are considering bleaching their hair. I'd never bleached my hair before, and um, I didn't realize the maintenance that's involved. Right. But it also felt like wire wool, like you could have like cleaned a pan with it. It was like, <laughs> made a noise on a pillow. Um, and in the end, I just had to shave my head to get rid of it because I hated it. This. Uh, is a photo of me when I was very young. But the reason I put it in there is because I was desperate to have curtains when I was about 12 years old. I had a massive tantrum because I wanted to look like David Beckham. So my big Dutch dad decided to put me in the bath, that bloody old day, oh, here you go, and put the shower on my head and then just cut a V into my fringe <laughs> to think that it would give me a um, parting. And it ended up with me having to go to school with big fluffy points coming out of my head like oh, that. Oh my God. <laughs> it was awful. So that's a lesson to you, don't ever let your dad cut your hair. And there are a surprising number of terrible hair experiences in my life, but I'll save those for another, another time.
thank you guys for bringing uh, your haircuts to show us. I feel like we've all learned something very important from this today, namely never bleach your hair. Uh, but before we go, I'd quite like to hear your kind of key grooming trip, the one grooming tip you would give the viewer at home to take away with them. Okay. Nick, you go. Uh, don't bleach your hair. Um, also, I'd say, I'd say um, SPF. Okay. Like I never ever wore SPF. And now I wear it every single day, even in not so sunny London. I think it's fine to be inspired by other people, but trying to look like someone else is always a fail. So I think it's about finding your strengths and celebrating them rather than trying to sort of replicate what someone else does. Only leave feet on your balls for up to six minutes. <laughs> <laughs> On that bombshell, <laughs> from, from a wonderful blonde bombshell. Guys, it's been fantastic having you here. Thank you so much for taking the time uh, and for joining us at this inaugural GQ Roundtable. Thanks, Thanks very much. Thank, Thank you. you.